Okay, so here's a table of values, trig values, and the 30, 45, and 60, those are ones that we just talked about before when we had those triangles drawn on the board, the 30, 60, 90, and the 45, 45, 90. I've actually put all the information together for you on a table, and this table is also going to be in the notes that follow this video it's for 30, 45, and 90. Now, I also want to take a look at 0 and 90 because these are values that I can put on these tables as well. So notice I've got the degrees and I also have radians, so that's filled for everything. However, uh, the sine, cosine, tangent values, I want to get that down from this drawing here. So this drawing is for a unit circle, same one, similar one we had on the board before. Now, for unit circle, we actually know what the x and y values are on, on each of these x-axis and the y-axis. So here, you're at one zero, this would be zero degrees. So the angle, again, if it's zero, it's just measured straight out this way. The x value is one and the y value is zero. We can put that information on our table uh, since we, we don't have it filled in yet. So for sine, the sine would be the y value at this point right here. So I'm gonna put in a zero for that. So sine of zero is zero. Cosine of zero, that's the y, uh, the x value, the x value at zero degrees. So cosine of the x value is one, I put that here. Tangent, the tangent is the y value, which is zero over the x value, which is one. So zero over one, that's gonna give you zero and that completes the top row. Let's do it for 90 degrees. 90 degrees is this coordinate right here, this, this point above here is zero, one. For sine, the sine is the y value, so this time the y value uh, is one. The x value is going to be zero. When you do tangent, the tangent is the y value over the x value. Now in that case, you have one divided by zero. One divided by zero is undefined. So we actually have one spot on our table where we don't actually get a value. If you try and put tangent 90 degrees, your calculator is probably going to give you a domain or an error on there. That's why you can't do it. It's undefined because it's trying to take the uh, the y value over the x value, 1 over 0, uh, is going to be equal to be undefined. Whereas up here, it was okay because the y over the uh, x, 0 over 1, was 0. 0 is on top, it's okay. You just can't have a 0 on the bottom that you're dividing by. So this table, make sure you put a star next to it, make sure you really look at that, and for those going to calculus, this table should be memorized. When you go to calculus, these values will be expected for you to know them, and they're just gonna put that on the board right away, and if you're not familiar with these, it may look like they're just grabbing numbers out of, out of air, but basically, they come off of this table. So this is a very important table, so we are gonna do a couple more examples based on this now. Okay, so now let's use the same table we just looked at before. Let's now find the exact value by using the table. We have these two problems, and both these problems require us to get values off the table in order to answer it. So I wanna do tangent pi over four and cotangent pi over four. All right, now tangent, tangent pi over four, we can get that off the table directly. Here's pi over four. We're gonna go over to the tangent column, and that tells us that we get a one. So tangent of pi over four, this is one. Now for cotangent, we talked about before that cotangent is actually the reciprocal of tangent. So if we already have the value for tangent, if we take the reciprocal, that's gonna give us the value for cotangent. Well, tangent is one over one. If you take the reciprocal of that, you still get one over one. So it means the cotangent value, that's also gonna be equal to one, and if you refer back to the special triangles that we had when we talked about that, we had that on the board, we had all the other secant, cosecant, and cotangent on there, you also will find that that value is equal to one. So add that together, exact value for the whole problem, it's gonna be two. Okay, now this right here, we have a, a square. So if you have cosine squared of 30 degrees, that's a special notation that they have on these problems. That actually means this. So if you have a square, that's always where it's written. It's written between the, the trig, uh, the letters here and the degree, okay? That means the same thing as a square. So cosine squared of 30 degrees, same thing as taking cosine 30 degrees and we're going to square it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to fill in the cosine 30 with the value that comes off of the table. 
and then I'm also going to find a value for sine of 30. Now when I put that in, I'm finding a value for the entire cosine of 30. I'm not just putting it in for the COS and then do something with the 30, no. It's the whole entire thing I'm getting the value off the table. So cosine 30, here's cosine column, 30 degrees means I get square root of 3 over 2. That means that the entire value of cosine 30, all of that, is square root of 3 over 2. So I'm putting all that inside the parentheses there. I don't have any more cosines, I don't have 30 degrees, because all that is the actual value that came off the table. Likewise, the sine 30, that value comes off the table as well. Sine is right here, 30 degrees, you get 1 half. So this is what it looks like. You have 2 that squared minus the 1 half. I need to simplify this, so I have 2 over 1. If I square the top and bottom, uh, square root squared is going to give you a 3, the 2 squared is going to give a 4, and you have minus 1 half. The 2 and the 4, you can reduce that, and that's going to give you 3 halves, because you get a 1 there and a 2 down below. So you have 3 halves minus 1 half, that's going to give you 2 over 2, 2 halves, which is the same thing as 1. So the value, this the exact value for B, all that will turn into 1. Okay, now for C and D. Uh, we want to do 1 minus cosine 60 over sine of 60. To do this, again, we want to grab these values off of your table. Cosine 60. So 60 is here. Go over to cosine. That value is going to be 1 half. So on the top, I'm going to write 1 minus 1 half. That's the value for cosine 60. On the bottom, I want the value for sine 60. Okay, so here's 60 degrees. The sine is going to be square root of 3 over 2, so that's that value there. Okay, now in order, to, we, we can't leave our answer like that, we want to simplify it. So let's do the top first. 1 minus 1 half is going to give us 1 half, but that's being divided by the bottom, square root of 3 over 2. We want to uh, divide these fractions, you take the top fraction, multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom one, so you have 2 over square root of 3. The 2's are going to cancel, you get 1 over square root of 3, but again you want to rationalize that answer, and we get square root of 3 over 3 would be uh, the answer for that by multiplying top and bottom by square root of 3 over square root of 3. So that answer is part C, that would be the exact value for this one. And let's take a look at D. Now this, we have pi over 3, so we have radians on our table that we can use to fill our values in. Cosine pi over 3, so here's cosine pi over 3 is 60 degrees, the value from the table is one half. But next, they want us to find secant. Now again, we don't have secant on our table. We only have sine, cosine, and tangent. But we're going to use the fact that your secant is the reciprocal of cosine. We talked about that before in a previous video. You could also go back and look at the triangles that we drew earlier for pi over 3, which is your 60 degrees, and you could, you could grab the value off of that. However, it would be easier just to think about reciprocals. So if cosine is 1 half, secant is always going to be the reciprocal of cosine. So we're just going to write the reciprocal of 1 half, and that's going to be 2 over 1. So that's going to be the value for secant pi over 3. It's just going to be 2. Now, we don't, for cotangent, we don't have that in our table either. But we do have tangent. We know that cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So first, you want to find tangent. And then we'll take the reciprocal, we'll find our cotangent. So here is the pi over 3 is here. We're going to go over to this tangent is right there off the table. That's square root of 3. Okay, so we don't want to put square root of 3 in there because we don't have tangent. We have cotangent. So we want to do the reciprocal of that. 1 over square root of 3 we're going to put in for that one. If I multiply this, I get 2 over 2. That's 1. So 1 minus 1 over square root of 3. You probably don't want to leave the answer with the radical in the bottom, so we're going to rationalize the second part, square root of 3 over square root of 3, and you'll get 1 minus square root of 3 over 3 will get there. Now you can leave your answer as that, or if you'd like to get common denominators, you could, and you would get this as the answer. So either this one or this one, both of them would be fine, they're both equivalent. And again, that would be what we just found, that's the exact value for this. So the word exact 
That means that you don't want decimal answers. You want to have answers that have fractions or the square roots in them.